Let me share with you my final thoughts from the interview with John Baker. As I mentioned in his intro, John, who is a blue belt in jiu-jitsu, played baseball professionally in the major leagues for seven years, and he's the mental skills coach for the Chicago Cubs. As I usually mention, I hope you're able to grab at least one good takeaway from the interview, and hopefully you can actually implement this takeaway in your life. My main takeaway is the first module of the five modules the Chicago Cubs presents during five weeks to all players from 17 to 18 years old from all over the world, grooming them in all aspects, especially mentally for them to hopefully perform one day in the major league. The first module is control, which is the foundation of the Stoic philosophy. Epitida said, we should always be asking ourselves, is this something that is or is not in my control? Epictetus was born a slave around 55 AD in the eastern reaches of the Roman Empire. Once freed, he established an influential school of Stoic philosophy, stressing that human beings cannot control life, only their responses to it. Personally, when I implemented the study in my life back in 2010 because of jiu-jitsu competition, I felt I was finally introduced to the concept of self-awareness, the number one pillar of the emotional intelligence. After a win, however, not a fulfilling win, at the 2010 IBJJF Las Vegas International Open, I started to question how I was feeling. Have you ever done that? I ask, why am I feeling anxious? Why am I not performing the same way I train? So I decided to get to the bottom of this, and I went home, Google mental preparation for jiu-jitsu. And there was nothing really available, so I looked for general sports, and I found The Fearless Athlete by Dr. Patrick Cohn, a 14-day plan for unbeatable trust. When I took my first assessment called Testing Your Fear of Failure, I finally realized, dude, I'm a wreck. There are 12 questions, and I answered yes to all of them. Here are some examples of some of the questions that I answered yes, not necessarily the same ones, but same context. Number one, do you perform better in practice than during a competition? Uh, yes. Do you suffer from anxiety, worry, or excess of tension prior and during competitions? Yeah. Are you afraid of disappointing your coaches, teammates, friends, and or family? Uh, yeah. Are you afraid of making costly mistakes during your match? Yes. Do you attach your self-worth to how well you perform in sports? Uh, yes. So, have you ever heard of the quote, you don't know what you don't know until you know it? Well, that made a lot of sense to me, and one of the steps from the course was identify the things you can control and the things you cannot control. In jiu-jitsu was control. You can control your effort, your diet, your sleep, technical training, strategic training, physical training, mental training, can't control if you're going to win or lose, disappointing others, if you, you can't control your opponent's resume, if the tournament is taking forever or not. With that being said, you must focus on things you can control. That's why it's so important to stop to think about what you think about. Self-awareness is key. So you can self-regulate and self-manage your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. So you can focus on things that you can control and are going to serve your purpose, not hold you back or move you away from your goals. The Cubs practice used with their players are followed by four more modules. The first one being the control. The second one, the gratitude. Third one, visualization. Fourth, mindfulness and presence. And the fifth, the integration, putting everything together together for the competition. Now I'm gonna share with you how you can prepare yourself for your next tournament based on using the concepts of the five modules. Not necessarily in specific order, but the number one still needs to be control the controller. Remember, Epictetus said, is this something that is or is not in my control? So fill out the assessment that I have available for free on this episode's post at the bjjmentalcoachpodcast.com to locate some of the negative patterns that might be holding you back and make a list of things you can and cannot control. Then you can start the process of visualizing yourself in the competition area. 
If you don't have the interest in competing, just visualize yourself in an under pressure situation like an important business meeting or something. But you must visualize not only your performance, but also the process of preparation and the process on the day of the tournament, walking into the gym, looking for the podium and telling yourself, at the end of the day, I'll be on the top of that podium. Is it going to happen? I really don't know, but it's your mental movie, so you can create whatever movie you want. Think about the process of checking your gi, the weigh-in process, and then the mat coordinator taking you all the way to your mat. The referee calls you to step on a mat. You shake hands and combat starts the match. Visualize the whole process and your performance. Of course, you must be aware of your dark passenger. Remember, the negative voice that lives in your head, which is basically your ego. You and your dark passenger will be roommates for life. Negative patterns don't disappear. You learn how to control them. How? With self-awareness and presence. On the day of the competition, you must be very present because it's the integration day when you put all the hard work together. You must be mindful of when the negative thoughts start to rush in Question those thoughts on the spot. Again, Epitetus said, is this something that is or is not in my control? Thoughts like, number one, man, this tournament's taking forever. It's too hot here. It's too cold here. Stop, stop, stop. Do you have any control of that? No. So move on. Is that a conspiracy against you? No, it sucks for everyone. So move on. Number two. Man, the referee on my mat sucks. I hope he doesn't mess up. Do you have any control of that? Do you con can you control if the referee is going to do his job or not? So no, back and focus on your performance, the moves that you're going to use, the game plan that you, that you plan on using. Number three, that guy won the world. Okay, can you control someone's resume? No, it's a fact. The fact cannot be changed. Only a response to the fact can be changed. He won the world. Fine. The problem is the negative opinion after the fact. That guy won the world, and I don't know if I can beat him. No, 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 no. Just stop right there. He won the world. Fact. Let me test myself. Let's see what happens. Number four. Did I train hard enough? Dude, if you're going to ask yourself about this, you should have asked this question about two months ago. It is what it is. When you're in a competition area, you just that's why the hard work is the foundation of self-confidence. When you know that you did everything you could to actually prepare for the competition, you're you're not be able you're not gonna necessarily ask yourself, did I hit train hard enough? Because you know you did. Number five, I don't want to disappoint anyone. Okay, here's the thing. Can you control the expectations that others have about you. If someone's going to be disappointed because you're not meeting their expectations for your performance, that's on them, not on you. So people who love you and care about you, they will be with you regardless through the good and or the bad performances. Last one. Man, I can't wait to be over. I'm so anxious. Why? You're the one who chose to be there. Be grateful. How many people would love to be in your position competing, but they can't? Because they were injured, they couldn't afford it, they didn't have a visa to travel, they were scared, or even worse, they don't even train because they got hit with life and responsibilities, but they always had in the back of their mind saying, man, I wish I could train again. I wish I could compete again. So be grateful and enjoy the moment during the competition because one day you will be very, very old and you won't be able to compete anymore. And you're going to tell yourself, man, how much I miss competing, that adrenaline, but I can't anymore. So in closing, focus on things you can control. Be grateful for being alive. Set the vision that you want for your life. Be mindful and present so you can integrate all these modules together 
and help you to perform to the best of your abilities with the tools and knowledge that you have right now. Sometimes your best is enough to win. Sometimes it's not. But at least you'll be at peace that you did the best you could with what you knew. So learn how to control your dark passenger instead of letting your dark passenger control you. Oh, We're glad you were able to join us for this episode of the BJJ Mental Coach Podcast. But the lesson doesn't end here. Watch the videos and download the audio of the 10 mental mistakes BJJ competitors make and how to avoid them for free when you subscribe to the BJJMentalCoach.com. Don't miss the chance to find out what might be holding you back from being your best self on and off the mat. That's the BJJMentalCoach.com.